And from what I can see, this seems to cause a bit of uproar among Texans who think, ooh, look at you, New York, naming one of your streets after our famous city and then changing the way you say it. <laughs> Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to place names. Specifically, place names that I've been saying wrong this whole time. Being from Britain, of course, I'm no stranger to place names whose spelling and pronunciation wildly differ. Just look at Leicester, Gloucester and the Isle of Dogs. I've just realised the Isle of Dogs is just funny and doesn't fit into this video. But what if I told you there are actually hundreds of place names in the United States that follow suit. Well, in fact, I have told you that before because there were two previous videos in this series. But since part two, I've had more than a year to think about it and so more places have come to my attention. Whether I discovered these wild pronunciations in the news or in the comments section or after buttering them in previous videos, here are seven US places I've been saying all wrong, part three. I don't know what it is about this Alaskan city, but it seems to crop up in a number of my videos. Firstly, I name checked it in one video because it's dubbed the snowiest city in the United States. Secondly, you may have heard me reference it in the video, British earthquakes ain't got nothing on America. I'm speaking, of course, of Valdez, Alaska. At least that's how I used to pronounce it before I heard it. That's the problem with a lot of these. I spend my time reading about them instead of hearing them and I end up looking like a prat. Because even though Valdez, Alaska was named after a Spanish naval officer, locals in fact pronounce it as Valdez, as in Valdez nuts. Does that, is that reference still relevant? It's not, no. And you might say that that was a pronunciation shift of seismic proportions. And that brings us on very neatly to this. In that very same video on earthquakes, I talked extensively about the New Madrid seismic zone. For more information on that and the related 1812 earthquake, I will link to that very video at the end. But one thing I discovered while researching that video is that I've been saying New Madrid wrong my entire life. That's an exaggeration, since I was three. In other words, like many people, I've been pronouncing it just like the Spanish capital, Madrid. But for the locals, it's not just a pronunciation shift, but one of emphasis. They emphasize the first syllable as in New Madrid, and this is an example of a shibboleth. And what's a shibboleth, Lawrence? Well, it's a custom or a tradition, or in this case, a shared spelling that distinguishes one group from another. In other words, it's to let you know that this place in Missouri is not the same as that place in Spain, although you'd think the word new would take care of that. Anyway, while we're on the subject of places that were named after European cities, but pronounced differently, that brings us on to this. Ah yes, Milan, Italy, where everybody is fashionable, except during those two months when Uncle Toby lived there. And the funny thing is about this entry, Brits and Americans can't even agree on how to pronounce the Italian version of the city, with Brits like me saying Milan and Americans usually opting for Milan. So when it transpired that there was a Milan in Tennessee, I panicked. I assumed it was just pronounced Milan, but then nothing is that easy, hence why there are three videos in this series already. In fact, locals, which is a term I've just realised I've been overusing and overgeneralising, but what the heck, call their city Milan, which does sound like an American boy's name. Funnily enough though, some people believe without strong evidence that the city in Tennessee was not named after the Italian city at all, but came about in the 1850s when a railroad surveyor asked the owner of the land, what's this place called? To which she replied, it's my land. And then they wrote it down. This sounds made up. I don't, I can't trust it. Clearly this kind of thing is common in the area of Missouri and Tennessee, but you wouldn't find it in my current state of Illinois. It's, really? I've been saying it wrong this whole time. As you may or may not know, there is a city in northeast Africa called Cairo. It is the capital of Egypt. Egypt, of course, is famous for the pyramids and for pharaohs and cat worship. Don't tell mine. <coughs> Little Egypt in Illinois is famous for not much, but we are about to put it on the map. And that's because it too boasts a city called Cairo. I say Cairo, that's not how it's pronounced. I say boasts. Uh, Charles Dickens visited there once. He hated it. 
In fact, and this is true, he used it as inspiration for his Nightmare City of Eden in the novel Martin Chuzzlewit. You know, but that was nearly 200 years ago. That's not a reflection of the city today, nor is it a reflection of how other British bearded writers think about your city, although I've never been. What I do know is, is that I spotted this place name on a map while searching for Grimsby, Illinois, which was named after my hometown in England. But as I've just discovered, Cairo, Illinois is pronounced Cairo. Clearly the locals have a humorous relationship with vowels, which is more than can be said for our next entry. Say hello to a place name that I'm pretty sure certain, I can't even pronounce, was brought to my attention in the comments section right here on YouTube. Not sure if they were joking or not, I went straight to Google Maps and typed it in. And sure enough, in the state of California, there is an unincorporated community called Zix or at least that's what I've been saying in my sleep for the past four years. And the grand history of Zix is a hilarious but mildly stupid one. You see, it was named this in 1944 by a radio evangelist called Curtis Howe Springer. And his reason for choosing the name is that alphabetically it would be the last word in the English language. But here's the thing, this guy who was a self-proclaimed medical doctor and minister actually had no legal rights to the land and was evicted and imprisoned by the federal government. And as it happens, he was neither a medical doctor nor a minister. And when it comes to claiming the last word in the English language, clearly the guy had never been introduced to the cartoon concept of sleeping. But despite all of that, Zix is still around to this day, except locals pronounce it Zizix. Well that's sure shown me, which in a weird way brings us on to this. Okay, I know what the near 1500 people who live in this city are thinking. Come on Lawrence, there's no way you've heard of our city, much less mispronounced it. But here's the slightly bizarre truth. Before going full-time on YouTube, I used to work for a company in which I provide consulting for healthcare professionals in the state of Idaho, and some of those professionals were based in Shoshone. Let me clarify, that's how I learned to pronounce it. Before talking to these health professionals, I wanted to make sure that I sounded like I knew what I was talking about, which as everybody knows when it comes to the US healthcare system is completely straightforward. But one thing I really didn't want to get wrong was the pronunciation of their city. So I looked it up and was told in no uncertain terms by a YouTube video that it was pronounced Shoshone. Well, it turns out that the terms were uncertain and I was notified that that is in fact how you pronounce the name of the Native American tribe after which the city is named. But the city is pronounced Shoshone and to this day, Idaho how I got that wrong. <laughs> I should have said that in the call, it would have lightened the mood. Recently, amid the rare snowstorm in Texas, I started doing some reading into the city of Houston, a city that I've always pronounced Houston and continue to pronounce as Houston to this day. And anybody who's watching from that very city might be thinking, good on you, Lawrence. That is in fact how we say it down here. To which I respond, Houston, we have a problem because A, I've always wanted to say that, and B, the Houston on this list doesn't refer to the city in Texas with whom I've been advised not to mess. I'm referring to Houston Street in Lower Manhattan. And that's because it was recently brought to my attention on Twitter that this is pronounced not Houston Street, but Houston Street. And from what I can see, this seems to cause a bit of uproar among Texans who think, ooh, look at you, New York, naming one of your streets after our famous city and then changing the way you say it. And even I was kind of on their side until I found out there was a perfectly reasonable explanation. The two places were named after a person from American history, but not the same person. Famously, Houston, Texas was named after the soldier and former governor, Sam Houston. But it turns out that New York's Houston Street was named after the American lawyer and statesman, William Houston. And since William Houston was initially a citizen of the Kingdom of Great Britain, you can blame this whole debacle on my people. That's it for this episode. Let me know in the comments below some of your favorite hard to pronounce place names. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. And a huge shout out to all of my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until the next video, goodbye.